James chapter 1. My beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man, which worketh not the righteousness of God, wherefore lay apart all filthiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Do you hear that? Be you doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See, when we can, we can try, to, try to justify, say, well, I'm not called to do this, or I'm not called to do that, or what I'm doing is sufficient. Let, let me tell you this. It is not possible, it is not possible for you to do too much for the Lord's sake. Amen. It's not possible for you to be too obedient to the Lord. It is not possible that you should have too many crowns in glory. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man holding his natural, beholding his natural face in a glass. Folks, if you, you know, it's interesting. He's not saying it's like to a person or somebody. But he uses a man as an example for a very good reason. Because the way men approach a mirror is totally different than the way women or children or infants approach a mirror. That's for sure. You know, a little baby is often, when the first time when they're able to crawl, they're two or three years old, they'll, they'll be peeking in the mirror and they'll play peekaboo with themselves. Uh, I have a little dog at home and every now and then he attacks that little white dog that's in the mirror. <laughs> But you'll, you'll notice something with, with teenagers. Teenagers, when they start getting their pimples on their face, oh boy. they'll kind of sneak up on the mirror. It's like if they can hit it <laughs> right at the right angle, the pimples won't be so bad, you know. And then, you know, women will, they'll get up there in that mirror and they'll be going, what are you know, <laughs> doing that, okay. But men, you see, they'll get up in that mirror and they'll shave and they'll look at that old mug it, and it might be ugly as seven miles of bad highway. <laughs> but they'll smile, you know, like this. They'll walk away and they got shaved feet behind their ears. <laughs> and then when you get outside, somebody's going to say, Do you know you have shaved feet behind your ears? Of course I know it. That's where I put it. <laughs> that happened. That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more. It tells too much. <laughs> Anyhow, he says, But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man should be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but this deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That means run to the battle. <coughs> and then in chapter 2, in verse 14, What doth the prophet, my brother, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, get faith, save him. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith with thy works, and I will show you the faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou dost well, and devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O man, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. It's worthless. It's absolutely worthless. And then if you'll turn over to Joel chapter 2. And then Joel chapter 2. Here, starting in verse 28. Now this promise that he, that he makes was partially fulfilled the day of Pentecost, and you'll find that if you go to Acts chapter 2, the reports in 14 to 21. But he's speaking to the Jew first and then to the Christian here, starting in verse 28. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in heavens and on the earth of blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. That will happen. There is no chance at all that won't happen. Amen. That is going to happen exactly that way. And then I want to finish here. And one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. This is what it is in Malachi chapter 3. It talks about the book of remembrance. And boy, believe me, you want to find your name written in that book of remembrance. Amen. And they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Do you understand what he's talking about? He's talking about the people who, of faith, who spoke about the faith, who talked about God, who talked about pleasing God and obedience to God. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return to serve between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Amen. 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 And with that, we have a song. Okay. All Americans, number six. Oh, my God. 